Chakotay's fine, Paris did all right on their helm and Torres knew her stuff, but the USS Voyager adopted the crew of the Valjean into its complement out of necessity. Originally, the vessel had a crew complement of 141 under the command of Captain Catherine Janeway, but over its journey, that original crew number depleted. However, the biggest loss was suffered in the opening episode Caretaker, where over a dozen crew members lost their lives during the rapid and not altogether smooth transition to the other end of the galaxy. Hi, Rick here and today we're looking into the extended lore around those who died on the ship's maiden voyage, the people that Starfleet would have selected, the unlucky original crew of the USS Voyager NCC 74656. First off, not every crew member lost to the Caretaker Array was named on screen and not even the books fill in all of those KIA, but there are a few named in the episode and in other materials that have a little bit of history pre-Voyager, so let's look at them. First off, the position Commander Chakotay stepped into, that of First or Executive Officer, was originally held by Lieutenant Commander Cabot. Aaron Cabot had a career on the USS Kingston in 2358, a transportation vessel. At the time, he was in a relationship with one Dina Wojskunski, also in Starfleet. However, they broke up in 2359 and Cabot continued to serve on the Kingston until 2361. At some point during its operation, the vessel was attacked by Orion pirates and the captain was killed. He was assigned to a shakedown cruise of the USS Voyager before its first mission, but technical issues arose in the new vessel and the USS Hood was dispatched to provide support. It was here that he and Dina Voskunski, now serving on the Hood, agreed to give their relationship a second go, on the conclusion of Cabot's mission into the Badlands. This would of course never come to pass. From what we see of his character, he seems to have trouble hiding his judgmental nature from rule breakers, but open warmth to those he considers earnest. His cause of death appears to be the major impact damage from the caretaker's displacement wave when it hit the vessel. This was not the only position of authority that was left vacant by the incident. Many of the division heads were also killed, including the chief medical officer and his entire medical team. This led to the emergency medical hologram being activated to fill in and several crew operating as part-time nurses, such as Lieutenant Junior Grade Tom Paris and the Ocumpen Kess. Dr. Bist Fitzgerald was the intended CMO of the Voyager and served in Starfleet Medical Institutions before his appointment as a Starship's doctor. His most notable position was as Chief Surgeon on the Starfleet facility on Kaldak Prime. This was the hospital that Cadet Tom Paris ended up in after the rueful day his piloting antics got three other cadets killed. Although the two never met before Bist was assigned to the same ship, the man achieved the rank of Lieutenant Commander and transferred to the USS Voyager in 2371, but was killed in sickbay when the displacement wave ruptured a bulkhead and blew out a console in his office. Alongside the loss of the Chief Medical Officer, an unnamed Vulcan nurse was also killed by the Array's actions. Her name is either Tyrell or Taprina. I'll go with Taprina, as this was in the novelization of Voyager's pilot episode. Almost nothing was known about her besides the fact that although Vulcan, she was seen being rather emotive in background shots, suggesting that as a background character the actress was not given much to work with. But what are the odds of that? <laughs> It's far more likely that she was actually a follower of the Fatoshka Tour, the Vulcans Without Logic, who attempted to find a balance between emotional suppression and the natural experiences of feelings, or that she was a Romulan agent planted on the USS Voyager to investigate Starfleet's plans concerning the Marquis, or perhaps a shapeshifter unaware of a Vulcan. You know what, she was probably just an extra, wasn't she? Still, I think the Romulan sleeper agent idea would have been cool. Either way, Taprina was likely killed in sickbay when the bulkheads blew out. The next department head to lose his life in the line of duty was Alexander Honingsberg, the chief engineer who was never even named on screen. Valana Torres of the Marquis would of course earn a commission and appointment to the position over Lieutenant Joseph Carey, Voyager's officially appointed assistant chief engineer, to Honingsberg. 
Lieutenant Honingsberg began his career out of the Academy on the USS Cairo until 2368, a ship commanded by Captain Edward Jellicoe, serving under this strict commanding officer for some time. Despite a loose tongue and borderline insubordinate attitude towards Captain Jellicoe, he was a diligent officer who performed well. He was part of the same shakedown crews as Cavett and worked on locating the fault that ended the initial outing. He died during the Caretaker's displacement wave and had one son, David Honingsberg, who also served in Starfleet donning the gold of operations and engineering back in the Alpha Quadrant. Actually, let's talk on Carey for a minute too. He had a larger role in the show, actually appearing on screen, unlike Honingsberg who is only mentioned in Beta Canon. But he was a remarkably skilled engineer, explaining Janeway's selection as him to be the obvious candidate as chief engineer and initially overlooking the ingenious Torres. It seemed that Carey at one point even earned a position on the USS Enterprise NCC-1701D, filling in for tactical at points with the rank of Ensign in 2364. He had a wife and two kids back in the Alpha Quadrant and it looked like he'd survive the arduous trip back home until he was tragically killed in 2378. It has to be said that one of the most gifted pilots in Starfleet was Tom Paris, but the cocky young lieutenant was discharged from the organisation. He eventually stepped up to helm Voyager, at the time one of the fastest vessels in the fleet, after the loss of its intended pilot, Lieutenant Veronica Study. Born on Beta Z in 2347, she graduated from Starfleet Academy in 2368 as one of the highest percentile students. Her first posting was the Sol System's Mars Saturn Run, which involved navigating the asteroid belt, something she excelled at. I mean, honestly, asteroids aren't really that close together, but that isn't as cinematic. In 2369, her top-notch piloting skills had earned her selection as the test pilot for the USS Intrepid NCC-74600, taking the prototype vessel through its paces and helping to iron out its wrinkles. By 2371, the USS Voyager had been finished and Stady's prior experience on its sister vessel, the Intrepid, made her the natural choice for the con of the Voyager. While awaiting its first mission, she ran transport for personnel from Deep Space Nine to Voyager, including conveying her future replacement Paris to her starship. She was killed when the displacement wave hit the USS Voyager and what looks like a plasma conduit above the helm exploded. She is survived by her sister, Alicia. The vessel also lost a transporter chief and an astro navigation plotter. These two were not named by this show, but it's not the dude who was plotting courses from the opening episode, so maybe one of the casualties listed by Seven of Nine in Imperfection. It's fun to speculate how the series would have turned out if more of the crew survived the initial relocation. How would they have treated the situation? What would they have done? Is there an alternate universe out there with a very different mixed marquee Starfleet crew where Janeway died and there was a scuffle for control between Chakotay and Cavett. How would the EMH Doctor have been utilised if he still had a majority of support staff, or even Bist Fitzgerald alive to man the sickbay? And who was Taprina really? It's fun to think about, and it's the kind of thing that keeps me up at night. I have messed up priorities. What do you think about the original crew? Would you have wanted to see more about their roles prior to Voyager? Narratively, they serve as little more than plot devices to give a reason for the crew merger. But it's good to remember that almost any corner of Star Trek has been fleshed out by other stories, and there's nothing wrong with that. And when all is said and done, that's what we are, a collection of stories. Until the next video, thanks for watching this one. I've been Rick and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.